Welcome to our mindful movement session. Together we're going to practice pranayama, our breath, mudra, some hand gestures or seals of energy, and also asana poses. And as always, remember to honor your body so you should not feel any type of pain or discomfort. Each of our bodies is unique. And if any, any time you feel a sensation that doesn't feel good in your body, then please, we can modify together or just rest. So we'll start today in Sukhasana with our legs crossed, if that's comfortable, and you might want to tuck a blanket or a pillow underneath your sits bone to just prop your heels up slightly. Sukha means ease. And let's tune in to the natural rhythm of our own breath's bodies. I say bodies in plural, meaning our energetic body, our physical body, and all the layers within. Elongate your spine lifting up through the crown of your head. Pull your shoulders up and back and let the tension start to drift away from your body. And we'll start with a mudra today. This is prana mudra. I'll show a picture. And we take our thumb and bring it to close our fourth and fifth fingers. And then our pointer and middle finger ex are extended. We can do this on both sides. And then bring your prana mudra close down to your waist. So I know you're seated and relax your shoulders. So if that doesn't feel comfortable, you can also just bring your prana mudra to rest gently on the tops of your hips. This is a mudra of vitality. It helps activate our body's healing abilities, our immune, our immune systems. And if you feel ready, you can either soften your gaze or gently close your eyes. Again, relaxing your shoulders and the muscles of your face. And imagine a golden ball of light hovering inside your abdomen emanating light outwards. Breathe here for a moment. Maybe moving your tongue around gently in your mouth to relax your jaws. And I'll introduce an author, Sokni Rinpoche, just a very brief reading to get us started from the book, Open Heart, Open Mind. Through the practice of mindfulness of body, what we're really doing is taking a moment to simply appreciate the fact of being in a body this is what it feels like when it's resting. This is what it feels like when it's moving. This is what it feels like to sit. This is what it feels like to stand. This is what it feels like to rest my hand on a table. Your mind is really engaged in the here and now, connecting with the bare awareness of having a body at rest or in motion. Simple facts of being present that many of us haven't thought about in a long, long time. 
The fact that we have fingers can be source of fascination and appreciation when freed from any judgment about whether they're nice fingers, short fingers, or long fingers. And I'll invite three sounds of the bell with a short gatha by Thich Nhat Hanh. Listening to the bell, I feel my afflictions begin to dissolve. My mind is calm, my body relaxed. A smile is born on my lips. Following the sound of the bell, my breathing guides me back to the safe island of mindfulness. In the garden of my heart, the flower of peace blooms beautifully. And start to bring yourself back to slight movement so you can release the prana mudra if your fingers were still in that posture. And we're going to come mindfully and gently down to our backs in restful, constructive rest pose. And actually, before we come to our backs, I'd like to do just a few more seated postures together. I changed the sequence slightly. So let's start actually take uncross your legs and bring your feet together in cobbler's pose. And pull your spine back in a way your tendency might be to lean forward as you try to grasp your feet. So pull your crown back upwards and see if you can gently butterfly your knees. Just a little mindful movement into the hips. Again, if the sensation does not feel good to your body, then maybe you just sit in stillness. And let's sweep our arms up with mindfulness with a deep inhale. And as our arms come down, let's twist over to the right, placing our left hand on our right knee. Deep inhaling and releasing. And then sweeping back to the center and exhaling to the opposite side, right hand gently comes to left knee and sweeping back up to the center. This time, let your right hand come down and just start to arch your body over to the right, feeling the opening in your left side body and then letting your left hand come gently and mindfully over almost like a dance. Let your right arm now reach up. And both hands come down and this time we'll sweep up. Elongating through your spine, let yourself hinge forward. Opening the hips, opening the upper back channels. And let your head start to come down, but lead with your chin. And pay no attention to where your nose is in relation to the floor. And 
Just breathe here gently. And now start to come back up and place your feet on the floor in front of you. Maybe using your hands behind you, opening the muscles of your shoulders and opening your heart center. And just start to tap your feet, waking up your legs. And now let your feet plant firmly on the ground, feeling the connection to the earth and letting your legs windshield wipe over to the right. You might need to broaden your knees a slight bit and over to the left, feeling a yummy opening in the shoulders and in the hips. And then let your knees come to the right and bring your hands over to the right side and start to mindfully circle out on the right hip, on the right sits bone. You'll feel that connection to the earth. Alternating directions. Seeing if you can have your breath lead your body. And now coming back to the center and again, windshield wiping the legs, your legs. Gently and mindfully, pausing wherever you feel a nice stretch for me, it's in my shoulders. And let's rest now with our legs facing over to the left, bringing our hands forward and doing a similar circular motion. Waking up our bodies for this wonderful day. And changing direction, pausing where it feels good. The more you listen to your body, the more we come in touch with our bodies bringing mindfulness, we can harmonize between our mind and our bodies and help restore ourselves to even better health. So now we will come to constructive rest pose. I was excited for this, so I guess I was rushing ahead earlier. Constructive rest pose, you're gonna ease yourself down very gently onto your back. and broaden your feet so that they are towards the edge of the mat and let your knees come in together. Surrender to the earth. Maybe you wish to bring one hand to your belly and one hand to your heart. And another option is both hands over your heart. Both hands over heart can be a very compassionate hand movement. And constructive rest pose is a place you can come whenever you need. Very good at releasing tension from the body.
Bring your attention to your breath at your nostrils. So where the breath is entering, feel the coolness of air. And let your exhale be deep and through open mouth. And focus on the rising and falling of your chest with each inhale and exhale. And if you had something soft underneath your body, let's move that over to the side so that our full body is now connected to the earth. And we're going to bring our knees up in a loving embrace. If you can, cross your arms across your shins and reach for opposite elbows. Loving what your body can do for you. Flatten the back of your head and press the lower part of your spine, your sacrum, towards the earth. And feel the sensation in your lower back. Notice if there's any places of tension. And if there are, slightly adjust. Soften your gaze or close your eyes. Let's bring our hands now right below our knees on our shins and just gently roll out the lower spine. This somatic stretching, very, very slow and purposeful with body awareness, disrupts the patterns in our mind of tension and stress and anxiety and tension can be stored in the lower back, which is why you may notice friends, family, or yourself at points having lower back pain. It's a mind-body connection. And so right now, we're telling our central nervous system, just relax. And you might want to open and close your knees like a little frog. And try different variations, maybe some rolling. Bring all your attention to your lower back and ask your body what movement would feel good right now. Maybe it's stillness. And let's cross, let's bring our arms open. So you'll tee our arms, or you can cactus them if that feels better. And start to on the count of one, two, three. So very slowly, we're going to one, two, three, our way over to the right, and then three, two, one, our way back to the center. So we'll inhale, and one, two, three. Let our knees find the right in a supine spinal twist. Focus on your left shoulder and see if you can Keep it connected to the earth. Inhaling. And three, two, one, back to the center. And now inhaling. And one, two, three, 
over to the left. Seeing if we can release the right shoulder to the ground. Gaze is soft and relax the muscles of your jaw. You can turn your head to the opposite side if you wish. But if you have any vertigo or dizziness, it might be best to keep the head still. Deep inhale and exhale. Inhaling. One, two, three, back to the center. And now bring your hands by your sides and raise your feet up to the sky in waterfall pose. And let's open and close our toes. If you still have socks on, you might wish to remove them now so you can take a moment to remove your socks so that way you can give your feet extra space, your toes extra space. And now let's point and flex our feet. Waterfall pose with our legs up is very, very restorative as well. Good for the lymphatic system. And we'll roll our ankles to the right in a circle and roll our ankles to the left. And now let's start to lower our left leg and we'll take our right leg and find the, your hands, maybe fingers together behind the hamstring stretching the right hamstring and if this is too intense you can bring your left foot to the ground and don't worry about straightening your leg we're just awakening the hamstring muscles and now place your left foot over i'm sorry your right foot over your left thigh muscle and we'll start to raise up into figure four opening through the right hip and right buttocks engage your left foot flexing your foot and you can reach behind through the opening and grasp the left hamstring Flatten the back of your neck again and soften your gaze. And breathe into the sensation in your body. Very nice. And we'll release that foot to the ground and right foot comes to the ground and now left foot can come up to the sky as we'll stretch the left hamstring. And if you wish, you can straighten your right leg to the ground or you can have your right foot remaining on the ground with your right knee bent and bring your breath to your left hamstring Now plant your right foot to the ground if it wasn't there and cross your left foot over your right leg and start to lift your right leg up into figure four, reaching through, if you wish, to hold on to your right hamstring. Each side of your body will be different. and breathe into the sensation flatten the back of your head soften your gaze and relax your jaws and soften if you're clutching 
your right leg. See if you can soften and release a tiny bit. Softening through your shoulders. And let's unwind and bring our legs back and bring your knees in. And we're going to start to roll a little bit. Our goal is going to be to come up to standing, but there's no rush to get there. So just have a little fun and roll back and forth if that feels good to you. Until you come up into a little ball. And we're going to start to stand. We'll be in Uttanasana, standing forward fold. Again, releasing the muscles of the hamstring. Now come back down into that little ball and you're going to come over onto your knees into tabletop. Mindfully come to tabletop. So wrists are under, elbows are under shoulders, and our knees are about hip width apart, wherever they feel comfortable. We'll drop our belly, look up, and then arch your spine with your exhale, emptying. Dropping your belly, looking up, and exhaling. You can pause at the top and bottom, or you can keep in motion. Whatever feels best to your body. The gaze is soft. And really bring your attention to your spine and caution of your neck as we drop our bellies. We don't have to strain. Just waking up the body. And now we'll slide forward to Sphinx pose. So hands are out in front of us and our hips can come down to the ground. This is a heart opening and also a little bit of a back bend happening in the lower back. So if this feels uncomfortable to your lower back, you know, feel free to soften and come down to crocodile for a moment. You can also gently rock your hips from side to side to release if you have any tension that has accumulated in your lower back. And breathe here. Chin is pointed strong and forward. Maybe there's a little smile on your face. And lower your belly down bringing your hands by your chest. We're going to do Bhujangasana, Baby Cobra, and start to wake up the lower spine. So we'll inhale, raising our nose just a tiny bit, and exhaling, bringing your body down, inhaling, coming up, and exhaling. And one more time, if you wish, you can rise up a little bit more to Upward Facing Dog. And let's press back to Child's Pose or Balasana, opening our knees wide. Big toes are together, hands are outstretched. And bring your hands to a fist. 
you will broaden your elbows and let the knuckle of one of your fists rest right between your eyebrows on your yin tang point. This is your third eye and we'll do a tiny self massage. So let your thumb joint or whatever part of your fist is resting in your yin tang on your yin tang point. Let it circle and exude a tiny bit of pressure. This is great for reducing anxiety and tension. And just letting the weight of your head and your thumbs control the intensity of the pressure. If this feels uncomfortable, you can also do traditional child's pose and bring your arms out in front of you and just rest your head on the ground. Child's pose can reduce lower back pain and tension in our lower backs. And this is a nice counter stretch to what we were doing on our backs. So with our bodies and our, all of our muscles and fascia, it's really nice to do counter stretches. And take the deepest breath that you've taken all day. And now release all of that. And if you wish, press up to downward facing dog. If your shoulders can't tolerate this, you can actually come to standing and you can do downward facing dog against a wall, opening the shoulders. Pedal out your feet. You won't stay here for too long. We're going to return to Uttanasana, or forward fold, very soon. So let's start to mindfully crisscross our feet and as slowly as you can almost being silly about how slow it is. See if you can come to standing forward fold like we were a little while ago. Knees are bent generously and your chest can be resting on your upper thighs. Tuck your hands underneath your toes and we're going to Massage out the wrists ever so gently. Relax the back of your neck. And this pose kind of reminds me for some reason of being like an ape or a monkey. But this feels really good on the wrists. Now take your hands out, place your left hand in front of your face and raise your arm, your right arm up to the sky. Deep inhale and exhaling back to the ground, right hand in front of your face and left hand comes up to the sky. And exhaling. Plant your hands firmly on the ground touching the ground, touching the earth. And now bring your hands to the tops of your feet and tap along your shins until you come to your knees. And now scoop your spine to come up very gently to standing posture. And we'll separate our feet slightly to Tadasana. 
powerful pose. Tadasana Hamam, body movement is about 80% of all the asanas. So if you can get this shape right, you can always model this in your other uh, mindful movements. Open your hands, your palms wide. Bring your shoulders up and down and back. And just feel your presence on the earth and notice all the sensations in your body and how you feel. Our chests is o are open wide. And now we will tuck our right foot behind our left foot and reach up, grasping our left wrist with our right hand. We're going to start to arch over to the right, breathing into the left side body. And then coming back to the center, uncross our feet and bring our left foot on behind the right foot and take your opposite wrist. So now left hand encircles right wrist and we're going to start to lean to the left. Breathing into the right side body. Very nice. And we'll do a little breath of joy. So if you have any blood pressure or dizziness challenges, you might want to come down to seated for breath of joy. Um, we don't want anybody to get dizzy. But if you wish to try this standing, you're just going to bend your knees and sweep up and then release down. Sweeping up and releasing down. And I'll turn to the side so you can see it. <sighs> Inhaling with a fluid upward motion and exhaling, <sighs> letting it all go. Inhaling, exhaling. <sighs> Very nice. And we'll do some sun salutation, half sun for today. So let's start again. Find your Tadasana. And we'll sweep up, slight back bend, and fold downwards. All the way back down to the ground. Halfway lift with your inhale. And then folding. See if you can bring a mindfulness to this movement. Really noticing the breath as you come up. And then bringing your hands in Anjali Mudra back to your heart center. Let's do that again. Sweeping up, inhaling, exhaling, folding forward. Inhale, halfway lift, exhaling, fold. Inhale, rising up, slight back bend. Hands come to heart center. Once more, inhale. And exhale. Halfway lift. And exhale. 
Inhaling up. Reaching back and hands come down to heart center. Keep your eyes closed for a moment, if that's okay for your balance. And just notice how your body feels. We're going to bring in a little balancing pose. And if you would like to do this with a chair, feel free to have a chair or a couch or something in front of you. You can also use blocks or you can do this um, without any, without holding on to anything. This pose is Virab, Virabra Jasana and this is Warrior Three. So we'll start with bringing our awareness to our right leg and bringing our weight to our right leg. And start by sliding the toes back of the left leg. And maybe this is enough. Maybe you're already testing your balance. But if you wish to continue, unlock the right knee. So make sure that your right knee has a little fluidity to it. And we're going to start to tip forward, raising our left leg. And there's several things you can do with your hands here. So you can reach your arms forward. That would be a traditional warrior three pose. But you can also bring your hands to heart center if you wish in Anjali Mudra. And your right leg is wobbling. See if you can lift your left leg even further. What is showing up for you right now in this pose? Where is your mind going? One more breath and hinge forward. Let your left foot find the ground and shake that out. Let that go. Sway your arms. And now we'll do the other side. So let's bring our awareness to our left foot and the strength in our left leg. And unlock the knee. Start to slide your right foot back, remembering you can be balancing on a chair for this. And we're going to start to hinge forward, lifting our left, our right leg, and then reaching out if you wish. Find a drishti, something not moving. Hands can also be at heart center in Anjali Mudra. And breathe into the sensation as you lift your right leg, feeling the strength of your left leg. Breathe here. And now lower your right foot to the ground and again, sway it out. And we'll separate our legs into a wide-legged stance. Toes are pointing slightly inwards. And maybe you wish to reintroduce the prana mudra from earlier. So we take our thumbs and find our pinky and fourth finger. And we point our two other fingers, the pointer finger and the middle finger. Maybe we bring that right near our waist as we start to hinge forward. And 
release the mudra. Let your hands find the ground in front of you. Raising your right arm to the sky. And right arm comes down. And left arm raises to the sky. And comes down. And now start to bring your hands to your waist and bend your knees so that you can come up to goddess. So now we'll point our toes outwards. And again, if you wish, create your prana mudra. Lengthening through the crown. We're going to just bend our knees up and down to start. And now come and stay in with a bent knee posture, feeling the strength of your knees and your legs. And raise up on your right toes and bring your right heel down. And raise up on your left toes and bring your left heel down. And now mindfully raise up on both toes. Breathe and sink down into the posture. And now release both heels and raise up to the sky and exhale, come down. Feeling the prana, the vit vital life force flowing through your body your energetic body. And this last time, we're gonna start to heel toe our feet in and come down to Malasana, our final posture before we come to Shavasana. Malasana is a grounding pose. And it's okay if your heels don't touch the ground. You can also have your hands on the floor and your heels might be lifted slightly. This posture activates all three bandhas. Our energy locks. Our hips are opening and this helps lubricate the hip joints. And this posture also aids in digestion. Interestingly enough, in many parts of the world, this is not considered an asana or a pose because this is just how people hang out when they don't have chairs. They sit like this, they eat like this. But for many of us, this posture, the hip opening, is not part of our normal daily practice. And when you're ready, bring your hands around behind you and start to make yourself comfortable for Shavasana. So you may wish to get your socks and put them back on. You might want to have a pillow for under your knees and a blanket for over your body. Shavasana is a calming posture. It helps reduce anxiety. You can come here whenever you need. So get all set up to have a little time now to let all the nutriments of this practice wash over your body. You can start to come down to your back, feeling the surrender into the earth. And if it felt good earlier to have your hands on your body, maybe you bring them there again. 
maybe one hand to belly, one hand to heart, or two hands on your heart center. Or maybe it feels better to have your hands open, receiving by your sides. And bring your awareness to the tip of your nose where the cool breath enters your body and exhale long and slow through your mouth. And then seal your lips so that your breath is entering through your nose if you can, if you're not congested. Of course, you can always open your mouth if that's easier. And follow the pathways of the breath through your body. Noticing it enter. And imagining the breath coming through your body to every single cell. And I'll share with you a short reading from Awakening of the Heart by Thich Nhat Hanh. We use our breathing to bring body and mind together as one. This condition known of, as oneness of body and mind is one of total integration. In our daily lives, we often find our minds and bodies separated. The body may be here while the mind is somewhere else, perhaps lost in the distant past or floating in a distant future. Through mindfulness, we can realize oneness of body and mind, and we're able to restore the wholeness of ourselves. In this condition, every practice will take us back to the source, which is the oneness of body and mind, and we open to a new, real encounter with life. When body and mind are one, the wounds in our hearts, minds, and bodies begin to heal. As long as there is separation between body and mind, these wounds can't heal. During meditation, the three elements of breath, body, and mind are calmed, and gradually they become one. When peace is established in one of the three elements, the other two will soon have peace also. For example, if the body is in a very stable position and all the muscles and nervous system are relaxed, then the mind and breath are immediately influenced and they too gradually become calmed. Similarly, if we practice conscious breathing in the right way, our breathing becomes more regular, calm and harmonious with every moment. And this regularity, calmness, and harmony of the breathing will spread to our bodies and minds. And the body and mind will benefit from it. It's only by these kinds of processes that the oneness of body and mind will be achieved. When there's oneness of body and mind, the breathing serves as a harmonizer. And we realize breath, joy, and ease, fruits of a meditation practice. Continue to follow the pathway of your breath through all the cells of your body. 
and start to wiggle your fingers and toes. And if you wish, roll gently and mindfully over to one side and place your hands in prayer position, Anjali Mudra at your third eye chakra. And I'll read to you a short gata. Breathing in, I calm my body. Breathing out, I smile. Dwelling in the present moment, I know this is a wonderful moment. And now start to come to a seated position. And rub your hands together to generate prana. And mindfully, place your hands over your eyes. Deep inhale and bring your hands to your cheeks. Deep inhale. And cross your arms lovingly across your shoulders. Deep inhale and run your hands down along your legs all the way to your toes. And now bring your hands back together, generating some more prana. And bring your hands to any place of your body that you would like to bring a little healing energy. And feel the healing in your own immune system's abilities. How the breath and the different postures can help ease tension and stress. And one last time, let's rub our hands together and cup our eyes. And bring our hands to our heart center in Anjali Mudra. May you move with mindfulness. And I thank you for our practice together and say namaste, namaste. And I'll close our practice with two sounds of the bell. <laughs> 